Another day, another ranking. Today, we're going to be doing the best shortstop from every single team in Major League Baseball. You guys know the drill, the 12 days of Christmas. I'm going to be giving you 12 days of rankings of Major League, different things, players, teams, etc. This is a huge project, probably one of the biggest ones I've done, so it would be really appreciated by me if you guys could drop a like on it. That's the best way to show your support. If you're not subscribed yet, click that sub button, join the team. I know there's a lot of you out there. You should join and sub. Remember to get in the comment section down below. This is a ranking video. I want to see what you guys think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? with me. I'd love to hear what you have to say down below. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at GiraffeNeckMark. Links in the description. I'm always talking baseball over there. So let's get these shortstop rankings started. Starting us off at the bottom of today's list, we've got the Baltimore Orioles shortstop Richie Martin. You probably haven't heard of Richie Martin and there's a reason why. Richie Martin's just not very good. Last year was his first and only season in Major League Baseball and it just didn't go as planned. Six homers, eight doubles, and three triples with 23 RBIs. He hit 208 with a 260 on base, 322 slugging, and a 581 OPS. On top of that, he's just not great defensively at shortstop either. For any other team besides the Orioles, Richie Martin's probably a bench bat at most, but he was their main shortstop last year in 2019. I gotta put him at the bottom of the list at 30. At the number 29 spot, I'm gonna go with Milwaukee Brewers shortstop Orlando Arcia, who is just so incredibly disappointing when I look at his numbers. Defensively, he's got a great glove. He makes some crazy good plays in the field, but at the plate, he has little to no value. With a career OPS at 652, throughout his career, he has consistently been a hitter that is extremely below average. Last year, he hit for a little bit of power, 15 homers, 16 doubles, and a triple for 59 RBIs, but he hit 223 with a 283 on base, 350 slugging, and 633 OPS. I don't care how good his glove is, I can't have a guy ranked higher with that kind of hitting. At the number 28 spot, it's J.P. Crawford, shortstop of the Seattle Mariners. He was traded from the Phillies to the Mariners last season in the trade for Gene Segura, and he really wasn't much better than he was with the Phillies in the few games he played. Seven homers, 21 doubles, and four triples for 46 RBIs, 226 batting average, 313 on base, 371 slugging, and 684 OPS. Again, just doesn't offer a lot at the plate. A little bit better than what we've seen in the past, but still not good. And defensively, he was below average as well. I personally think he's a little bit better fielder than his numbers lead on, but overall, J.P. Crawford's just not a top shortstop in the game. For the 27th best shortstop in baseball, I'm gonna go with Jordy Mercer. Nine homers, 16 doubles, 22 RBIs, 270 batting average with a 310 on base, 438 slugging, and 747 OPS. He has a little bit more pop in his bat, but defensively, he's much worse. He's definitely not a gold glover up the middle. As a bench bat, again, he would be a really nice piece off the bench. He could play a variety of different positions, but as an everyday shortstop, Jordy Mercer just really doesn't excite me very much. That's why he's in the bottom of this list. At 26, I got Brandon Crawford. Man, is he overrated? Please, he's 26 best shortstop. Brandon Crawford used to be a very solid shortstop, hit above average for his position, and had a great glove, but his glove has gotten worse as the years gone on, and his hitting is almost non-existent, because last year was probably the worst year of his career. 11 homers, 24 doubles, 2 triples for 59 RBIs, a 220 batting average, which is a career low, 304 on base, 350 slugging, and a 654 OPS. Combine that with his defense getting worse every year, still not bad, but it's not gold glove level. Brandon Crawford just feels like an old guy who's staying around because he's still on the Giants. It's going to be my 25th best shortstop. Jose Iglesias is going to be our number 25 shortstop in today's video. Iglesias had possibly one of the best seasons of his career last year in 2019. He's only 30 years old, so he still isn't necessarily like out of it just yet. But the problem is with Jose Iglesias, his hitting's just not that consistent. Now, he did hit for a nice average last year at 288. 11 homers, which was by far a career high, 21 doubles. He doesn't walk at all though. He walked only 20 times in 530 plate appearances. A 407 slugging was a career high, so he had a 724 OPS again, which was the second best of his career. His numbers improved last year, but that still doesn't show me enough based on what we've seen in the past. Love his glove. Some of the best hands in the league, but he's just not a complete shortstop for me. For the 24th best shortstop, I'm going to go with Dansby Swanson. I've been really disappointed by Dansby Swanson. He starts off the year kind of hot every season, and then he comes back down to earth. He has injury problems. Problems. He's fantastic in the field, but we haven't seen him play consistently enough at a top level to really put him much higher on this list. Now, last year, he had some good power, 17 homers, 26 doubles, three triples. He had a career high in slugging, career high in on base, and a career high in batting average. So he is definitely taking a step forward. It's just, I can't put him much higher because at the level he's produced thus far, he's just an average shortstop. At number 23, a stalwart for the Texas Rangers. Let's go with Elvis Andrews. Andrews has never been known as an offensive guy in Major League Baseball. His power went crazy in 2017, with 20 homers, 44 doubles, and four triples. Easily the best season of his career. But 2019 just like wasn't that good. 12 homers, 27 doubles, four triples, and 72 RBIs. He did steal 31 bases, which was really nice. 275 batting average, 313 on base, 393 slugging, 707 OPS. He's a solid fielder at shortstop. It's just he kind of gets clumped in in this group of the average shortstop in Major League Baseball. And he's going into his 31-year-old season. So I just, I don't have a lot of faith in Elvis Andrews. He's very good, but he's not the guy who's going to take your team to a next level. Ahmed Rosario, big fan of him. I think there's big things 
things come in for him as a Mets fan, but he is the 22nd best shortstop in Major League Baseball. I'm a big Ahmed Rosario fan. You guys know I love the Mets. And last year, he finally took a step forward. We started to see the potential that the Mets scouts once said that he had. 15 homers, 30 doubles, 7 triples, 72 RBIs. Stole 19 bases, but did get caught stealing 10 times. He doesn't walk a lot. Only 31 walks and 655 plate appearances. That's pretty bad, so he needs to improve that. But he hit 287, had a slugging at 432, and an OPS of 755. That was above the average of shortstops last year. Problem is, defensively, he's pretty weak. Doesn't make a lot of tough plays. Sometimes doesn't make the easy plays. He's still only 23, so I have a lot of hope for him. I feel like fielding is something that he can learn, and that speed he has, you just can't teach it. At number 21, disappointed me big time last year. I got Adalberto Mondesi, who only played in 102 games in 2019 due to injury, so his numbers are a little bit skewed, and I gotta admit, I was a little disappointed from him this past season. I really like him as a player, just didn't put up the numbers offensively that I hoped. Nine homers, 20 doubles, and 10 triples. 62 RBI, stole 43 bases in 102 games. That's impressive. 263 batting average, 291 on base. Another guy who just doesn't walk, refuses to do it. 424 slugging and a 715 OPS. For a guy who's a speedster, he needs to get on base way more than he's currently doing. His glove is really nice as shortstop, but I need to see more of a complete game from him at the plate. Coming in at number 20, I've got the most overrated shortstop in Major League Baseball, Gene Segura. People like to tell me that he's like a top 10 shortstop. It's just not even close. He hit 37 doubles last year, which is fantastic, but only 12 homers, drove in 60 runs. Another guy who doesn't walk, 280 average, 420 slugging, 743 OPS, a low average offensively last year. And on the glove side, he is basically just bang on average, if not below average. He's going to probably be moved to second base this year for the Phillies. Gene Segura is a good player in the right team, but he is not one of the best shortstops in Major League Baseball. He is middle of the pack. At 19, one of the quiet rookies last year should have got more attention. It's Kevin Newman of the Pittsburgh Pirates, part of that new young core the Pirates have that's looking pretty decent. In 130 games last year, Kevin Newman hit 12 homers, 20 doubles, and six triples, stole 16 bases, 308 batting average, 353 on base, 446 slugging, and 800 OPS. Defensively, not bad. I didn't put him higher up on this list. I liked his numbers in these 130 games, but I need to see a little bit more out of him before I start putting him higher on this list. Part of the reason might be a little Pittsburgh bias. I don't watch a lot of their games, but from the clips I have seen, I think this guy has the potential to be a really good shortstop in baseball. After a career season, Nick Ahmed slots in at number 18 for me in today's video, who had a really nice season last year. He's the best fielding shortstop in the National League, close to the top in baseball, and he actually started to hit a little bit more last year. Career highs in batting average, on base percentage, slugging, and OPS. Career high in home runs, tied his career high in doubles, career high in RBIs, career high in stolen bases. He had a career season, as you could probably tell, and of course, he was still great in the field. So if Nick Ahmed can continue to hit at this level and play that good defense at short, he can get higher and higher up on this list, because in years past, he just wasn't much of a hitter. For 17, I got Willie Adamas, who actually surprised me with how good he was offensively and defensively last year, who I think has the chance to probably be the guy who jumps the most on this list going into 2021. Last year in his first full season, he hit 20 homers, 25 doubles, and a triple to give him 52 RBIs, a 735 OPS, which was slightly below average. He's a fantastic fielder at shortstop. The guy is a really gifted player out there. I think his hitting is going to come around. He made quite the improvement from 2018, in my opinion. I like what Willie Adamas is doing. I think he's going to be a part of that future for the Rays for a long time. And like I said, I think he has a chance to skyrocket up this list next year. At 16, let's go with the bat flip king himself, Tim Anderson of the Chicago White Sox. You might think this is a little bit low, but prior to this year, Tim Anderson has been a bad shortstop in baseball. Now in 2019, he had a breakout season, 335 batting average, 18 homers, 32 doubles, an OPS at 865. That's fantastic. Slugging 508. Defensively, uh, he's, he's not great, but he's not bad. He is definitely an offensive minded shortstop, but I can't put him much higher because like I said, the years past, he's been so bad at the plate. One breakout season doesn't make him a top 10 shortstop. For the 15th best shortstop in Major League Baseball, I got Didi Gregorius. He's like bang on average. Didi only played in 82 games in 2019 due to coming back from Tommy John surgery. And in those 82 games, he was okay. 16 homers, 14 doubles, two triples, 61 RBIs, 238 batting average, not great. 276 on base, not great. 441 slugging and a 718 OPS. He was definitely a disappointment, but he was coming back from a big surgery and injury, so that's understandable. The reason I have him at 15 is he's just an average fielder, and at the plate, I think he's probably an average hitter. It's just in that Yankees lineup, in that stadium, his numbers get magnified. Didi was made to play in Yankee Stadium. All his home runs come down the right field line, and they just get out in Yankee Stadium. I still think he's a very solid player. It's just I don't think he's like a top 10 shortstop like some people regard him. So let's put him at number 15. At 14, this one's probably gonna bother some people, but I'm I'm gonna go with Paul DeYoung. I'm a big Paul DeYoung fan, so this could be a little bit of bias clouding my judgment. I think he's really good, and I don't think his numbers were even fair last year because he went through a terrible slump. He hit 30 homers, 31 doubles, 78 RBIs, 233 average, which was bad, 318 on base though, and a 444 slugging to give him an OPS at 762. Defensively, he is right on par with Nick Ahmed. He is a 
fantastic fielding shortstop, and he's got so much pop in that bat. If the guy can just hit a little more consistently, he is without a doubt a top 10 shortstop, probably close to top five. But because of that inconsistency at the plate, I had to drop him down further on this list. I think 14 is a good spot because the dude still has an incredible impact. The hair is just too nice. At number 13, I had to go with Bo Bichette. We didn't see a lot of Bo Bichette last year, only 46 games, 212 plate appearances, but boy was I impressed. He performed like how I expected Vlad Jr. to play. He went off. 11 homers, 18 doubles, and 196 at bats. 311 average, 358 on base, 571 slugging, 930 OPS. I absolutely love watching this guy swing the bat at the plate. He's going to be so good next year. He's also solid in the field at shortstop. Bo Bichette is going to be a star in Major League Baseball. Having only played 46 games is why he falls outside the top 10 at number 13 for me, but I'm pretty confident next year we're going to see him easily inside the top 10. He's just so good. Coming in at number 12, I'm going to go with Andrelton Simmons of the Los Angeles Angels. Yikes, what a disappointing season he had in 2019. Coming off the best season of his career in 2018. Like the last two seasons with the Angels, he was starting to hit and Andrelton Simmons took a huge step backwards in 2019. He was battling an injury, so that's definitely part of it, but he did not hit well last year. 264 average, 309 on base, 364 slugging, and a 637 OPS. Another guy just refuses to walk. The reason he gets so high on my list with that terrible offense last year, it's because he is by and large the best fielding shortstop in Major League Baseball. He makes plays that don't even make sense sometimes. They literally leave you confused. His glove is so good that it almost doesn't matter how he hits, and I think injury played into why he played so poorly last year. So, might be a little high, but I'm gonna go with Andrelton Simmons at 12, which means just missing out on the top 10 at number 11, I'm gonna go with Jorge Polanco of the Twins. Breakout year in 2019, finished 13th in the MVP voting, was an all-star, a really good season coming off 2018 where he only played in 70, 70 games due to a PED suspension. Let me tell you, it looks like it didn't matter. 22 homers, 40 doubles, and seven triples, 295 batting average, 356 on base, 485 slugging, 841 OPS. The dude was smacking baseballs last year. He's great in the field as well, has a really nice glove at shortstop. Jorge Polanco is a really, really good shortstop. I'm excited to see what he does next year after this strong 2019. Very close, but just misses out on the top 10, which starts our top 10 now. And coming in at the 10th spot, I'm going to go with Corey Seager, who had a disappointing season, but was still very, very good. 2018, only played 26 games, had Tommy John surgery, came back in 2019, had a really good year. 19 homers, a National League best 44 doubles to give him 87 RBIs, 272 batting average, which was a little low, 335 on base, 483 slugging, and 817 OPS. Corey Seager is really good. I have almost no issues with him. He's great defensively at shortstop, has a great arm, power left-handed bat. It's just that shortstop is so loaded that he falls all the way to 10. Shortstops are crazy in baseball. At number nine is one of my favorite shortstops in Major League Baseball. That's going to be Trey Turner. And it pains me to say that as a Mets fan, but he's really, really good. Only 122 games last year. Missed games due to injury, but he hit 19 homers, 37 doubles, and five triples to give him 57 RBIs. Stole 35 bases, 298 average, 353 on base, 497 slugging, 850 OPS. This is coming from a guy who's known for his speed. Defensively, his numbers say he's below average, but I really have never had a problem watching Trey Turner play short. I think he's pretty solid out there. He's not a gold glover. I love what he brings to the game when he gets on first base. It gets in the pitcher's head. They have to worry about him. His impact goes way beyond the numbers, and even just looking at the numbers, he's still a top 10 shortstop, which is why I put him at number nine. For the eighth best shortstop in Major League Baseball, I'm gonna go with Glaber Torres. Now, I understand Glaber Torres is more of a second baseman, but since they didn't re-sign Didi Gregorius, it looks like Glaber's gonna be their shortstop in 2020 with LeMahieu at second. I don't like him as much at short as I do at second base. Now, he's still an unbelievable hitter. Can't deny that. 38 homers, 26 doubles, 90 RBIs, 871 OPS, it's a 535 slugging. Like, those are crazy good numbers offensively. He's only 23 years old. He's gonna be getting better and better, which is scary to think about. It's just that his defense at shortstop is pretty horrible. He has little to no range. Nice strong arm. Gloves a little weak though. Got a bit of stone hands. At second base, he can get away with it, which is why they originally put him there. But now they're moving him back to the shortstop role. I'm not a huge fan of it. Offensively, top five shortstop in the game. But you include defense, he comes in at number eight. The seventh best shortstop in Major League Baseball is gonna be the spark plug, Carlos Correa. Carlos Correa is so good. He's just gotta stay healthy because he only played in 75 games last year, but hit 21 homers, 16 doubles, 59 RBIs. For a full season, that'd be what? Like 40 plus homers, 30 doubles. 100 plus RBIs. He's so good. 279 average, 358 on base, 568 slugging and 926 OPS. He's great at shortstop. His range is crazy. He might have the best arm at shortstop in Major League Baseball at absolute cannon. I just need you to be healthy, Carlos, because when you're healthy, oh my goodness, are you a special player? But injuries keep him down at number seven. Just missing out on the top five at number six, I've got Fernando Tatis Jr. Am I crazy for putting him this high? Maybe. Is he this good of a player in my opinion? Without a doubt. Tatis only played in 84 games last year and listen to these numbers. 22 homers, 13 doubles, 6 triples,
triples, 53 RBIs, 16 stolen bases, 317 batting average, 379 on base, 590 slugging, and an OPS at 969. That's a 162 game average of 42 homers, 25 doubles, and 12 triples with 31 stolen bases for a shortstop who's 20. Oh yeah, did I mention that he's lightning fast and has a cannon of an arm and plays great defense at short? Fernando Tatis Jr. in a couple years is going to be the best shortstop in baseball. It's just not his time just yet, but boy, is he good. I need that new Padres jersey. All right, getting our top five starter. We got breakout player last year in 2019, Marcus Simeon of the Oakland A's. What a year he had. He's always been incredible defensively at shortstop, underrated if anything, but he really took a step forward with his offense last year. 33 homers a career high, 43 doubles career high, seven triples, 92 RBIs, 10 stolen bases, a 285 average with a 369 on base, 522 slugging, and an 892 OPS. Finished third in the MVP voting. That's how good of a season he had. He's an Iron Man at shortstop. Played all 162 last year. Played 159 in 2018. Marcus Simeon is so underrated. Watch some Oakland days baseball. You got him. You got Matt Chapman. There's a lot of talent there. He's a fun player to watch. Number five. Coming in as the fourth best shortstop in baseball, I'm going to go with Javi Baez of the Cubs. People love to call Javi Baez really overrated, but I don't think you guys look at his numbers. Yeah, he doesn't walk a lot, but the guy absolutely rakes the plate and is a fantastic shortstop. 2019, coming off a season where he was almost the MVP, 29 homers, 38 doubles, 85 RBIs, 281 batting average, 316 on base. You would like to see that be a little higher. 531 slung and give an OPS at 847. Cut down on the strikeouts a little bit. 156 is high, but when you hit home runs like he does, run the bases like he does, and play shortstop like he does, you don't have a lot of complaints. So for me, Javi Baez is the fourth best shortstop in baseball. Coming in at number three is the new most underrated player in baseball. That's Xander Bogarts taking over that crown from Anthony Rendon. Bogarts finished fifth in the MVP voting this year. Arguably should have finished third. Like this guy's numbers were so good and he seems like he's only been getting better. He's only 27 years old. In 2019, he hit 33 homers, 52 doubles, both career highs, 117 RBIs, career high, 309 batting average, 384 on base, 555 slugging, 939 OPS. By far the best season of his career. Defensively, he's not great. He falls below average, if anything, but he has been improving on defense. I still feel like that's an easier thing to learn than how to hit because if he hits at this MVP type level every single season, it's going to be hard to keep him out of that number one spot. Xander Bogarts is so good. I need to get me a Bogarts jersey. He's number three shortstop in baseball. Well, I can see the Coors Field comments already. Because coming in at number two, I got Trevor Story. I don't care if he plays half his games in Coors. Trevor Story hits wherever he goes. Trevor Story is a beast. Trevor Story is the second best shortstop in baseball. Second season in a row with 30 plus homers at 35. 38 doubles, five triples, 85 RBI. Stole 23 bases. 294 batting average. 363 on base. 554 slugging and 917 OPS. Some of the best numbers offensively out of all shortstops in baseball. He does strike out a bit. Another strikeout problem at 174. Exceptional glove at shortstop. Underrated. Doesn't get enough press for how good he is defensively. Him and Arenado keep that infield in check. The Rockies need to be better so that we can see Trevor Story on national TV more because he is a very exciting player. Hits massive home runs. Flashes the leather at shortstop. Steals bases. He's electric. He's so very good, but I just can't put him at number one yet because at number one, the only choice is Francisco Lindor. Any other choice is incorrect. You are wrong. Don't say anybody else. Since coming up in 2015, Lindor has been one of the best shortstops in baseball, and I feel like he's probably held that crown the last two or three seasons. 2019, he played 143 games, missed a little bit of the season at the start due to an injury, and he still had some good numbers. Not bad, you know. 32 homers, 40 doubles, two triples, 74 RBIs, 22 stolen bases. Only hit 284 with a 335 on base, 518 slugging, and OPS at 854. Won the gold glove at short. Like, yeah, he's a pretty good fielder as well. Beat out Andrelton Simmons this year. Francisco Lindor is the definition of a complete shortstop. Him and Trevor Story fields well, runs well, hits for power, switch hitter, so he hits from both sides. He doesn't have a weakness, this guy. How do you get him out? I can't believe the Indians aren't going to keep him. There's talks about trading this guy. Are you crazy? Francisco Lindor is not only the best shortstop in the game, but he's easily a top 10 player, maybe even top five. Big Francisco Lindor fan, easily best shortstop in baseball. So those are my rankings for the best shortstop from every team in Major League Baseball. I'd love to know what you guys have to say down in the comments below. Give me your thoughts and opinions. Remember to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. 12 days of rankings. We're coming at you every single day for the 12 days of Christmas with different rankings. I hope you guys are enjoying them. This is like a huge project. It's taking a lot of time, but it's going to be worth it. Remember to subscribe to the channel so if you want to see more of these rankings, you don't miss out or you just like baseball and want to support me. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at draftnickmark. Links in the description. I'm recording this video at midnight on a Sunday, so I think it's about time I wrap it up here. I'm a little tired. Thank you so much for watching today's video. You guys know the drill. YouTube recommends you watch this video right here as well as this is my most recent upload. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you so much for watching guys. I do appreciate you and I'll see you all tomorrow for another ranking video. Bye.